your assignment three, which is you're going to be doing a lot of drawing and multiple MVCs and all that stuff. Your assignment this week is going to be the variables thing. Okay? All right, so let's do that program var. Okay? I'm just going to go back to our calculator here. All right, and leave off exactly where we were. All right, so here's my controller right here. I'm not going to uh, change my controller to do this. This is purely a brain thing. Okay, here's my brain, calculator brain. So I'm going to add a new var. Let's put it, uh, I don't know, down here. Okay, it's going to be called program. It's any object. Now, I'm going to make it be any object, but I'm also going to make it be a property list because it's more useful. People can put it in its user defaults or whatever. So I'm going to use a cool Swift thing called type alias. Type alias lets you create a type, a name type, that's exactly the same as some other type. So I'm going to create a type called property list, which equals any object. So property list is now a type in Swift. It's exactly the same thing as any object. Now why would I create this? That's because I'm going to change this to say property list. So I'm going to change, make the type of my program be property list. This tells anyone using my program that, yeah, it's any object, but it's also a property list. Okay? This is documentation. I'm essentially documenting here that this any object is property list. I could have also just put some comments in my code that says it is, but it's kind of really hammers home the po point here that this is uh, a uh, property list. Okay? Now I'm going to have my program here be computed. Okay? So I'm going to do the get set thing. right? And so now I need to have my program internally. I need internally store my program. So I'm actually going to go up to the top and create another private var, which is my internal program. And so I have to think about how I'm going to store my program, you know, all the operands and operations internally. And I'm just going to store it to show you the power of any object. I'm going to store it as an array of any object. Okay? And the objects in that array are going to be a double if it's an operand, or a string if it's an operation. So I'm going to have an array that has a mix of doubles and strings. Okay? And that's going to store my program. I'm just going to put operands in as doubles and then put operations as strings. So that's another power of any object here. So how do I implement my internal program? Real simple. Okay, when I set an operand, I'm just going to tell my internal program, append that operand. Oops. Okay, now normally this is any object, operand is a double, that's a struct, that normally wouldn't work, but the bridging, the Objective-C bridging, will make this work. Okay, I told you everywhere in the UI where you have this compatibility, it's going to automatically bridge. I don't, look, I don't have to do anything or say anything, it just automatically always bridges when necessary. Okay, similar down here in my operation, when someone performs an operation, I'm just going to tell my internal program, append the symbol for this operation. Okay, that's a string. Again, a struct, but it's automatically bridged to ns string, and thus can be in any object. Okay, that's it. That's the entire implementation of my internal program. I'm just remembering every operand and uh, operation. So now I'm just going to return that internal program here, okay, to be the program. Now you might be freaking out. Whoa, you're in returning your internal data structure here to a public caller, but what kind of type is an array? A value type. And what happens when you return a value type? It gets copied. Okay, so I'm not returning a pointer to my internal data structure here. I'm returning a copy. Okay, that's again the cool thing about having these things be value types. All right, so now we have to do the set. So someone can now get my program and they can give it back to me later and I have to run it. Okay, so how am I going to do that? Well, when someone sets my program, first I'm going to clear whatever's in my uh, program. So you, you guys probably implemented something like this for your uh, homework, but I'm going to see a, clear my accumulator. Uh, I'm going to say that I have no pending binary operation, and I'm going to clear my internal program that I currently have uh, out. Actually, I'll just remove all items from my internal program, okay? <laughs> So that's clear, because I'm running a new program, so I want to clear myself out. Right? Make sense? Now I'm just going to say, if the program they get me, gave me is an array of op operands and operations, so I'm going to say, if I can let array of ops 
equal this new value that they just gave me as an array of any object, which it has to be. If it's not that, I can just ignore this. Someone gave me a program which was not one that I gave out, so I'm ignoring it. Because it's got to be an array of any object or I can't figure out what it is. So if it is, now I'm just going to go look through at all the ops in there, all the operations and operands. Okay, an array of ops. Okay, that's how we loop through an array, right? For in. And for each one, I'm going to check and see what it is. Now, what type, if I could alt click on this, what type is this going to be? Any object, exactly. See? Any object. So I can't do anything with any object, so I have to try and see if I can make it something else. So I'm going to first try and make it be an operand by saying op as a double. Okay? So if I get to here, then this op, the next thing I looked in the array, was a double. Excellent. Then I can just say set operand to be that operand. Okay, because I'm running the program. So I'm just going to replay, basically, my operands and operations. Otherwise, if I can let, let's say, operation equal the op as a string, okay, then I'm going to perform that operation. Okay? Done. Okay, very simple. I've done it. Now, you're going to have to really make sure you understand this because you need to enhance this for your assignment number two because you're going to have variables you're going to have to deal with here too. You're going to have variables in your program, not just uh, operands and operations. Now, let's see this thing in action. We've got this code. We want to make sure it works. So let's put something in our UI that actually checks this program business. So I'm going to go back to my storyboard. I'm going to steal a couple of buttons here. I'm going to make this be the save button and this be the restore button. So I'm going to have the save button save the program and then I'm going to have the restore button restore the program. Okay? So you can see how it would look like to use that. So these are not operation buttons anymore, so I'm going to disconnect using right click. All these perform operations. Okay? Then I'm going to wire these up. Let's make some room. Uh, we'll wire them up uh, down here, all right? So I'm going to wire up save first, put it right here. I'll call it save. Uh, it's an action. It doesn't need an argument. I don't need the sender this time. This is the first time we've seen where we don't need a sender, okay? At least the first time, not in your homework. And uh, here's restore. And uh, restore is also an action. And it doesn't need an argument either. Here we go. There's save and restore. Okay, how am I going to implement this? Well, I need the saved program, so I'm going to have a saved program. Its type could be any object, but I'm actually going to have it be calculator brain dot property list. Just to be clear to myself, this is a property list, and if I wanted to save this into NS user defaults, I could. Okay, but I'm not going to, but I could. All right, so how do I save? Oh, and I'm going to make this optional because, of course, I might not have hit save yet. So it's going to start out as nil. As soon as I hit save, it's going to have a value. All right, so how do I save? Well, I'm just going to say that this saved program equals the calculator brains program. Okay, that's going to store it in there. Really good, easy. How about restore? Okay, well, if I have a saved program, okay, if it doesn't equal nil, then I'm just going to set the brains program equal to the saved program. Okay, I have to unwrap it because it's an optional. And then I better update my display value now because the brain's going to have a different result. It's got a new program. It's going to have a different result. Got it? Okay, now this code, you don't need this in your assignment. This is, I'm only put this here just to demonstrate program. You will need the other code in calculator brain, but you will not need this code. Okay, let's go ahead and run this. All right, here we go. We'll make this a little bigger. All right, let's rotate so that our restore button looks better. All right, here we go. So let's put a program in here. Four times five plus one equals. Okay, that's 21. Okay, let's save that program. Now let's do pi square root. Okay, that's good. Plus eight equals, something like that. Now let's restore. What should happen to our display when I restore? 21, because it's going to rerun that program. And sure enough, there it is. Okay, 14 divided by 7 equals restore. Okay, we've run that program and that's the result in there, so we can say times 2 equals. Okay, we could save it again. Okay, 
47 divide 8 equals. And now when we restore, we'll get 42, which is the meaning of life, the universe, and everything. And so we're done. <laughs>